So I'm going to demonstrate how to do a simple input circuit on the Raspberry Pi uh, using Python as a programming language and just a, a switch um, to, to provide the input. Uh, on my breadboard I've got the GPI pin here and uh, a ground rail there, 5 volt rail and 3.3 volt rail. Uh, but just for this circuit we'll just need the uh, GPI pin and the ground rail. So I've got a, uh, a little switch here bit difficult to see because it's quite small. Um, so I plug that in uh, to the board and then I, for safety I usually use just a, a resistor between the GPIO pin and ground because um, sometimes GPIO pins can be configured for output and so if we just connected the switch straight to ground uh, and the G, a GPIO pin was configured for output and it was set to high and the button was pressed, that would take the GPIO pin directly to ground, the five volt, uh, three volt free to ground, and that could put, that probably would damage the Raspberry Pi, so it's always best to put a, a resistor in, and I use a 470 ohm resistor. So if I connect that between the switch and the GPIO pin, just for safety, uh, and then the other side of the switch, just take that to the ground rail, so the electronics are as simple as that. For the Python program, um, to do this, uh, at the top just got some import statements. So I'm importing sys because I'm going to read the key keyboard um, and when the enter key is pressed, I'm going to exit the program. I'm using importing time so I can get the current date and time of the system. Uh, and date and time I'm using, um, importing so I can format that into a string which I can print on the display and the Raspberry Pi GPI because I'm using the GPI pins. And then I've got a definition line where I define the GPI pin I'm going to use uh, in the program. So I'm using pin 14. This can be changed to whichever pin you're going to use. And first of all, I've got a, uh, a, a procedure which sets up the Raspberry Pi GPI. So uh, the first line sets it up so that the GPI will be using in Python refers to the pins as BCM as the BCM references which is um, rather than the physical pin number it, it, the G, so GPO 14 and then we set up the GPO pin that we're using pin 14 to be an input and we uh, set up a pull up resistor on it uh, and because as you saw um, when the switch is open then the GPIO pin is going to be open circuit, and which means it floats and it's undefined. So in here we define it to have a, a, an internal pull-up resistor on it, which means its default value uh, is on, uh, and then we pull it down to ground. Uh, and then we have a, a line where we set up a, an event that we want to occur on the pin when we press the um, button. So for GPIO pin, which we're using pin 14, on the rising edge, so when someone presses it, so you can also set up uh, an event for the falling edge, so when someone releases it, but so whenever someone presses it for this particular event, we uh, call this routine uh, input callback, which is just down here, and I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, and we have a, a bounce time of 200 milliseconds, which means that if, uh, if two Two presses occur in within 200 millisecond time. It'll only uh, include the first press, um, because sometimes with electrical contacts, you can get like uh, states where they, where they're just coming into contact and they they trigger a few times. So that's to prevent the false false um, presses. And then the in, this is the uh, in, the callback routine for the event. Um, and the first thing we do in here is we get the current date and time and then we display the current date and time and the GPI pin which was pressed which is going to be pin 14 in our case and then the main main program first of all we initialize the GPIO like the first procedure we looked at we set the key value to, to zero so this is when I detect um, a return key being pressed to exit the program so this is the while loop so while key equals zero and then just down here I read the key so each time it goes around the loop it reads the key and if the key press is return it exits and in, in, and we sleep periodically as well 
so then when the program exits, all it does is it cleans up the rails with high GPIO pins uh, so that uh, they're free to be used by another application. So I'll run the application. And so it's waiting there for me to press a button. So I'll go and I'll press the button and it occur, they get the, uh, the event occurring and it goes through the routine. So every time I push the button now, uh, you'll see the event occurring. And that's how simple it is to set up uh, an input for programming in Python on GPIO pins.